Mechanics of respiration or movements of respiration. Okay. So thoracic wall. So it's a osteocartilaginous. That means what? Made up of both bones and cartilage. So osteocartilaginous a wall which is slightly elastic even because of the cartilage is present. Okay. Which is conical in shape. What is the shape? If you look at the thoracic cage. So this is all wall is also called as thoracic cage because inside which you have the organs like lungs, the lungs, lungs the lungs, great vessels, the esophagus and even the heart. Okay. So this thoracic cage or wall protects all those organs inside. Okay. So this thoracic wall or the cage made up of bones. So what bones make up the thoracic cage. So anteriorly you have in the center of the midline of the axis you have the a, a flat bone that is called as the sternum. What is this bone? Sternum. The sternum. And posteriorly similarly in the axillary line. So you have the series of bones which are formed which are called as the vertebras. The vertebras in this region they are called as thoracic vertebras. What are they called as? Thoracic vertebras. So which are 12 in number. How many? 12. 12. 1, 2. 12 in number. Okay. So anteriorly you have one bone that is the sternum. sternum. Posteriorly you have 12 vertebras which are the thoracic vertebras. So now connecting these posterior bones with the anterior bone. Okay. Connecting from posterior to anterior side. They begin from the posterior side and then make a joint with the sternum. So those are the 12 pairs of uh, bones which are called as the ribs. What they are called as? Ribs. I said 12 pairs. That means 12 on the right, 12 on the left. So these are the bones which connect the vertebras with the sternum. With the sternum. Not all. We will come to know that later. Okay. So these are the bones. So three bones. Okay. What are they? Sternum, vertebrae and ribs. So these make up the thoracic wall or the thoracic cage. Okay. So now here. Thoracic clavicle is not much, so you can say it has forming only the part of the inlet. Yeah. Menubrum is part of sternum. So the sternum is having different parts like menubrum, sternum, body of the sternum, and Z part process. Yes. So these are the parts of the sternum. Okay. So now. So actually the details of these bones will be learning in the labs, okay, like what are the, how do you classify the ribs, what are the features of the ribs, what are the features of the vertebra, the sternum and all, you will learn in the a lab. So just for, for your uh, understanding, to make you the further lecture understand, so I will give just few details about the each bones what we are studying, okay, mm -hmm. uh, forming the part of all your thoracic wall, okay, yeah. So. The same thing what I explained. It's a thoracic cage. So one more point is here. If you look at the posterior wall of the thoracic cage, on which you have the uh, two upper limb bones situated, to which the upper limb is, you can say, as attached to the the trunk. Okay. So those are the two scapulas on the posterior wall, without any bony attachment. They are not attached to the ribs. So only attachment is to the clavicle and laterally to the head of the humerus, okay. So now first come to the ribs. So as I already explained, ribs are attached posteriorly to the vertebra and anteriorly to the sternum, okay. So not all ribs, if you look at this thoracic cage, not all ribs are attached to sternum, okay. Only the ribs from 1 to 7. They are attached to the sternum. So that's why those ribs which are attached posteriorly to the vertebra and anteriorly to the sternum, they are called as true ribs. They are called as, it's a one way of classification of the ribs. They are called as true ribs. What are true ribs? They are the vertebrosternal. What are true ribs? They are the vertebrosternal. From 1 to 7. From 1 to 7. So, but from 7th onwards, that means 8th, 9th and 10th, 8th, 9th and 10th, they are attached to 
the upper rib costal cartilage upper costal cartilage for example 8th is attached to 7th 9th is attached to 8 10th is attached to 9th you can see it here okay forming the costal margin what is this called as costal margin it forms the boundary of your the outlet thoracic outlet i will come to that okay so whereas the last two the 11th and 12th their anterior end is free okay their anterior end is free that means they are called as the free ribs or the floating ribs because they don't have any anterior attachment okay the 8th 9th and 10th they are called as costo or vertebro chondral ribs what they are called as vertebro chondral why they are called as chondral because they are attached to the 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 cartilage of the upper ribs that's why they are called as vertebro chondral 1 to 7 vertebro sternal 11th and 12th floating or free ribs am i clear about the classification of the ribs 1 to 7 are called as vertebro sternal or true ribs 8th 9th and 10th they are called as false ribs or even including 11th and 12th okay 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th all together we call them as false ribs and 8th 9th 10th the name given is vertebro chondral the 11th and 12th we call them as floating ribs or the free ribs because they doesn't have any anterior attachment am i clear about the ribs there is one more classification like typical ribs and atypical ribs which we will learn in uh, uh, the lab so typical means what what do you mean by typical ribs yeah that means they look alike the ribs which look like same for example if you look at the fifth time sixth rib fifth time sixth rib except in the uh, what is that the the length so the features are all same it is usually difficult to for example all the ribs they are disarticulated from the skeleton and mixed it will be you will be no. facing difficulty in identifying this typical ribs which is fifth which is sixth which is seventh like that you will face difficulty why because all yeah. they look same, same, same except the length okay am i clear yes. so such ribs are called as typical ribs that means which have the same features the ribs which are which are having their own features yes, yes. which are having their own features they are called as atypical ribs for example if you, in the group you can very clearly take out the first rib the second rib okay then ninth and even 10th okay and even the 11th and 12th so so those are the ribs which are called as atypical ribs okay am i clear yes. so typical ribs and atypical ribs so i'll just name the atypical ribs you will come to know which are the typical ribs so first Second, ten, eleven, twelve. So some authors even they doesn't include the tenth, but so some authors they include the tenth also. But very clearly you can very clearly differentiate first, second, eleven, ten, twelve. So these are the these are the atypical ribs. The rest are typical. The rest are yeah yeah atypical. Okay, I can show you. See, this is the first rib, which is flat. If you look at the this rib, they are all curved. Okay, the surface is internal surface and external surface. Whereas here the surface is superior and inferior surface. Am I clear? This is under the clavicle. Yeah. Under yeah. The first clavicle. rib. You will learn it again in the lab. There is separate uh, a lab for ribs. Okay. So that is about the ribs. Okay. So two types of classification: true ribs, false ribs. Okay, and then typical ribs and atypical ribs. Am I clear? So next, coming to the sternum. So sternum, nothing much. It's a flat bone having mainly three parts: so manubrium sternum and the body of the sternum, articulating at this area. What is it called as sternal angle? What is it called as sternal angle? So there is a slight angulation between the manubrium and the body of the sternum, and the terminal part, which is small, that is called as zipi sternum. Our zipoid process. Okay, three parts. Am I clear? So at the sternal angle, at the sternal angle, very important clinically, you have the attachment of second rib. Attachment of second rib, very important. So that is the by that sternal angle, we are able to we are able to count the ribs. So we, otherwise, it becomes difficult for us to locate which is third, which is fourth rib, and all. Okay. So we have to start from the sternal angle, which is a very important landmark here on the anterior chest wall. So locate the sternal angle. Just go lateral to it. 
what are the rib you fail is the second rib and then go on counting from there third fourth like that okay better count on the mid axillary line because if you go here you will not find the ninth tenth and line so if you go in the mid axillary line you can count okay am i clear so why the sternal angle is important counting the ribs which is the rib which is attached at the sternal angle area it is the second rib clear yeah so now come back to the last part of your bone which is forming as part of the thoracic wall is the vertebra you already learned in your first year i guess okay yes. so what are the parts of the vertebra you have a body what i am holding now and this is the vertebral arch vertebral arch and then the body okay so these features features of the vertebras will be different according to the region where they are situated the vertebras they doesn't look like like so in the cervical they look different in the thoracic region they look different is the lumbar region they look different okay so all the vertebras including your cervical line the lumbar they everyone every vertebra will have a body and then a vertebral arch so vertebral arch is attached to the body with the help of small piece of bone this bone we call it as pedicle what is this called as pedicle pedicle attaches the arch with the body okay so now from the pedicle you have two bones moving down posteriorly so these are called as the lamina, lamina. what they are called as lamina. lamina both lamina they fuse and then run down this is called as spine, spine. what is this called as spine. spine so from the junction here so two processes are running upwards facing like this and two are facing downwards these and are the two and these are the two yeah. down so these are called as articular facets superior articular facet inferior articular facets to which they have attachment to the no the the other vertebra the vertebra above and vertebra below see they are making joint like this so inferior articular facet of the vertebra above and the superior articular facet of the vertebra below they are articulating am i clear so they are the articular facets and last point is the two processes are there which are running laterally can you make this so these two okay so they are called as transverse process because they are running transversely am i clear so these are called as transverse process so i will repeat the parts of the vertebra the body and the whole thing is vertebral arch okay so these are the pedicles then you have the lamina and then the spine superior articular facets inferior articular facets transverse process am i clear and now the features which are specific to thoracic region are on the body of the thoracic vertebra you have two facets which are half half facets demi facets what they called as demi facets okay the superior costal and inferior costal facet are you following superior and inferior costal facet to which you have the attachment of the head of the rib so these are the two vertebra are articulated okay so now the rib articulates two bones two what is that two vertebra yes so it articulates two I'll show you with the superior crossing. So like this, this is the attachment of the rib. The rib head. This is called as the head of the rib. Head of the rib articulates with body of the two. Body of the two. So how exactly? Which, for example, if you consider this as the sixth rib. What is that? Sixth rib or the seventh rib? Okay. So now this seventh rib articulates between. T6 and T7. T6 and T7. So T7 with the lower one. That means where you have the attachment like this, and the T6 will be upper one. That means that means even even say so this 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 part of the rib is called as the tubercle of the rib. What is called as the tubercle of the rib. So tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse process. In in two uh, ribs, yeah. In, in, in two vertebra, yeah, two vertebra. Only you you, you see the articulation of the uh, what is that? The uh, tubercle of the rib. It is only to one vertebra. Yes. The corresponding vertebra. If this is six, then this will be six. Uh -huh. If this is seven, this is seven. Mm -hmm. The tubercle of the rib articulates with the 
transverse process of the corresponding vertebra. Am I clear? The corresponding vertebra. So the upper will be the sixth one. If you consider this as the seventh rib, the lower will be seventh vertebra and the upper will be sixth vertebra. So seventh rib articulates between T6 and T7 and the tubercle of the seventh rib articulates the transverse process of the seventh rib. Am I clear? Remember this. Clear? Understood? No, just the yeah. Only to the body. Yeah. Only the tubercle I am talking. Whereas the head articulates with both six and seven. First, clear. This is about typical ribs. For example, for example, atypical ribs. For example, first and second ribs. Okay. First and second ribs, they doesn't have two facets on their head. They have only one facet. Mm -hmm. It articulates with only T1. That's why they are called as atypical ribs. Yes. T2 also articulates only with T2 or uh, vertebra, not between 1 and 2. Am I clear? Yes. Yes. Depending, uh, the rest, the typical ribs between 2. But very important, okay, very important point is this tubercle. Tubercle articulates with the transverse force of the corresponding vertebra. Same, same. Okay? If it is 7, it will articulate with the transverse force of the 7 thoracic. Yeah? Eh? Spinoid. Spinoid. The head, head. The head, yes. head with between two. Yes. Okay. So that is about the features of the vertebra, the ribs, and the sternum. Very brief. Okay. You will learn in detail in the lab. Eleventh and twelfth, they are called as the floating ribs. Yeah. So we call 8 to 12 as false. The falls are again you can because of the attachment. So 8 to 12 are they called as vertebrochondral. Whereas 11th and 12 they are called as floating ribs. Yes sir. Am I clear? But 8 to 12 all together false ribs. True and false depends only on the attachment to the sternum. Clear? Yeah. So this is what the same what I explained, okay? The yes. typical and atypical ribs. The sternum features, okay? The sternal angle is have the attachment of the second. Clear? This is the features of the vertebra, okay? So you can make out here this what even vertebras are also classified depending on the presence of the costal facets are typical vertebras and then atypical vertebras. Okay, like that. So where you can see the demi facets for ribs, superior and inferior, okay? Some one will be half, some will be full like that, depending on the ribs with which they are articulating. See, this is the attachment. So I said explain this is the seventh rib, okay? So it is attached between C6 and C7, okay? So you can see the head articulating with both 6 and 7. Whereas the uh, tubercle is articulating with the transverse of the 7. Clear? I explained, no? Depending on, for example, the first thoracic vertebra, the upper facet will be full. The lower facet is half. The ribs are also classified into typical, and, oh, sorry, what is that? Vertebras are also classified into typical vertebras and then atypical vertebras. You will learn that in the lab, don't worry, okay? So now coming to the whole thoracic cage as such. So, this thoracic cage, Okay, it is between you can say the neck and the abdomen, right? So there are structures which pass through the from the neck even should go to the abdomen. So that's why it will have the thoracic cage will have the inlet and then outlet. Am I clear? So inlet and then outlet. So what is the inlet? Inlet is small, kidney shape, you know, kidney shape. So far boundaries, it is having boundaries. Okay. So what is the boundary of the inlet? You have anteriorly the manubrium sterni. What do you have laterally? You have the first rib. What do you have posteriorly? You have the first thoracic vertebra. Am I clear? Yes. Boundaries of the inlet, which is small, which is kidney shaped or reniform shape. Reniform means it is the kidney shape. Okay. So that we call it as the inlet. That we call it as inlet. So what structures will be passing through the inlet? What is there in the inlet? Okay. So you have structures like, so that is what I was mentioning about the boundaries. Anteriorly you have the 
So this is about the measurement. Okay. Anterior posteriorly 5, transversely 10 cm. Okay. Anteriorly you have the manubrium, side you have first rib and then posteriorly you have the body of the first thoracic vertebra. Okay. So now the structure is passing. Are you following this? Very importantly what you have is the apex of the lungs. Small part, we have the cervical pleura, you know, covering the lungs. So, upper part, small part, they will be piercing through the aperture. So, apex of the lungs will be passing through the aperture, uh, superior, uh, that is the uh, uh, inlet. And even the, all the longitudinal structures which are going from the neck into the thorax or to the abdomen. What are they? Trachea. I need not explain to you, okay? You have the trachea, you have the esophagus, okay? You have the nerves, vagus nerves, phrenic nerves. And the vessels coming up from the arch of aorta, brachycephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, okay, left yes. subclavian, they all will be passing through the upper. Just list out all the structures which are passing through the inlet. You should know that, okay? So now coming to the, the outlet, which is big, okay? So what are the boundaries? Can anyone tell about the boundaries of the uh, outlet? What is there anteriorly? The zephoid process. Laterally, you have the Costal margin formed by the 8, 9th and 10th. Yes. Okay? And posteriorly, these free ribs are there, the 11th and 12th. Okay? What is that? Still laterally. Laterally in the posterior part. Whereas posteriorly, you have the 12th thoracic vertebra. Clear? So that forms the boundaries of the outlet. Boundaries of the outlet. And very important point here about the outlet outlet is not open entirely. What do you find in the outlet? The diaphragm, you have the diaphragm. Outlet is closed by the diaphragm. So, the, how does the structures enter to the abdomen? So, they will pass through the diaphragm. That means the diaphragm will have openings through which the structures will be going to the abdomen. Or from the abdomen, they are coming to the thoracic cage. Like thoracic duct, digestive vein. They begin in the abdomen and then come to the thoracic, right? So, that is about the outlet. So, which is which is closed by the diaphragm. Clear?